In this short lecture on Euripides' Bacchae, I'm going to talk about a scene which many people regard as the most powerful in the play. It's the scene in which the king Pentheus, having decided to put an end to the cult of Dionysus by the use of force, is asked by Dionysus himself whether he, Pentheus, would like to see the Minads sitting together on the mountainside. And he says, yes, he would, and would give a lot of money to do so. Whereupon Dionysus persuades Pentheus to put on female dress as a disguise in order to go and see the Minads on the mountainside. And rather surprisingly, Pentheus agrees to do so. He goes into the house. There's a choral song, and he emerges dressed in female garb as a minad. He then, even more surprisingly, sees two sons and two cities of Thebes and the god Dionysus as a bull. And he, Pentheus, has become extremely docile, like the woman he's dressed as, and allows rather demeaning attention to be paid to the details of his dress before being led off to the mountainside where he will be torn into pieces by his mother. Now, this is a scene of transvestism. It's a very powerful scene. What's going on? Well, in productions of the play, it's very often played as a gay scene. There's a, a homosexual relationship developing it is implied between Pentheus and Dionysus. And of course, transvestism for us remains a fascinating theme dramatically, hence the power of the scene. However, if we really want to understand what this scene meant to the original audience, we have to go further than our modern preconceptions allow. It's important to understand that here, as Elsewhere in the play, there is a reflection of mystery cult, the mystery cult of Dionysus. Mystery cult was a rite of passage, a rite which changed the nature or the status or the identity of the individuals uh, who were initiated into it. And here we can see a very powerful shift in the internal state of Pentheus as a result of an external act which is putting on the clothes of a female. In mystery cult, the boundaries between fundamental identities, between male and female, between human and animal, between uh, human and God, uh, were dissolved. So that the transvestism has to be seen not just in psychological or gender terms, but also in terms of the rite of passage, of initiation into the mysteries, like many other scenes of the play. Now, some evidence for this is provided by the curious passage in which Pentheus sees two sons and two cities of Thebes. What is going on here? You have to ask yourself, in what circumstances would you or anyone see two of the same thing? Well, you can see two of the same thing if you have a certain kind of hit on the head which damages your eye. Very rare, but it does happen. That clearly hasn't happened to Pentheus. You can also see two of the same thing if you're very, very drunk. I sometimes ask people whether they've been so drunk that they've seen two of the same thing. And, and almost nobody I know claims to have been that drunk. And clearly Pentheus just isn't drunk. What is the other circumstance in which you would see two of the same thing? In a sense, it's so obvious that people don't even notice. It's through the use of a mirror. Now, that may seem irrelevant, except that we know that mirrors were used in the mystery cult of Dionysus. One example that may be known to some people is 
the Villa of the Mysteries at Pompeii, which depicts a mystic initiation into the Mysteries of Dionysus. And in one of the scenes, it looks as if a young um, fawn or satyr is looking into a cup in which is reflected a mask being held up behind him. That would be an example of using a reflecting surface in mystic initiation. The, uh, the famous phrase from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, through a glass darkly, in Greek, diazoptro in enigmity, actually means through a mirror in a riddle. And it's clear that Paul is using language taken from mystery cult, which would be familiar to the Corinthians, in order to make a eschatological point. Now, in Aristophanes' play, The Thesmophoria Zeusai, uh, we have a parody of Aeschylus' Lycorgeia, a trilogy about Lycurgus, who, like Pentheus, resisted the uh, new cult of Dionysus. And in that play, uh, we have the line, Tis dai katoptru kai xiphus koinonia. What is this association of mirror and sword, i.e. this association of female and male? Dionysus seems like both a female and a male at the same time. He's carrying a mirror and a sword. So it's virtually certain that in Aeschylus's version of the myth, Dionysus was carrying a mirror. So I could go on, and there's a whole number of indications to suggest that what's going on here in the myth that's being dramatized, possibly in the actual practice on stage, was that a mirror is involved in allowing Pentheus to see two sons and two Thebes at the same time. So what seems initially a rather far-fetched idea, the more you look at the evidence, the more convincing it becomes. And it gives us a general lesson that in order to really understand the most mysterious and the most striking of these scenes in the Bacchae, you have to abandon your preconceptions about what they're about, really find out something about an ancient religion. And if you do that, then the scenes come to life with what was their original profound meaning. <laughs>